Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, we've been on 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and then we're going, to go, we're going to continue from where we stopped yesterday. Can we just pray? Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, thank you. Just like Jesus said, we make this request, give us this day our daily bread. Thank you, Lord, for revelation that will come to us today. And we receive it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. You know, you know when, when Jesus said we should ask for daily bread, he wasn't just talking about physical food. Remember, Jesus said it. Jesus re-echoed what, what God said to Moses. He says, man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Now I want you to take note of that word. Every word that proceeds, not proceeded, but proceeds. What does that mean? Let me let me let me let me use a bread factory. It says look if you want to eat bread, eat bread that proceeds from that factory. Praise God. Now, that, what does that tell you? That tells you that that bread factory will be functioning and producing bread for you. So go there and get fresh bread. So when, 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 when God says we should live by every word that proceeds, he wasn't talking about the word that God gave two years ago. He wasn't talking about the word that God gave ten years ago. He wasn't talking about the word that God gave to so, so man of God. He is talking about the word that is coming to you now from the Spirit of God. Praise God. So as you're listening, I may be the one here sitting and, and, and doing the teaching, but listen, the Spirit of God is in your heart. And there are things He will begin to tell you as a result of what I am saying. So this is an atmosphere to receive bread. Praise God. And let me tell you the truth. When you receive this bread, then the other physical bread will come to you naturally. Because see, the Word of God is like a magnet. It attracts from the earth everything that he talks about so when you hold on to the word in your heart it will begin to attract the physical manifestation of what he talks about praise god all right then first corinthians chapter three and and we 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 got talking about baby christians you know people who are meant to be spiritual but because they are still babes there's a limit to which god can do in their lives now god can heal them healing is not the greatest gift that god gives Money is not the greatest gift that God gives. I'm telling you the truth. You know what the greatest gift God gives, God can give to any man, is utterance or entrance to know him. That is the greatest gift that God can give anybody. I'm telling you the truth. You see, Jesus said to his disciples, he said, you guys, you are going to sit down with me, judging the nations of the earth. Now, why it looks like a simple statement so you i'll give you a seat to judge it's not just that he's going to give it's because i'm going to open you up to my knowledge and understanding that you can now judge you judge based on what you and a novice cannot be a judge i hope you know that so if god wants to make you a judge the first thing he does to he opens up knowledge to you so that's why i said the greatest gift that the lord gives is when he opens his knowledge to you praise God so that's what you should seek and if you have that Jeremiah tells us let the rich man not glory in his riches let the wise man not glory in his wisdom let anyone who wants to glory should glory in this that he knows and understands God and to know and understand God you don't know him by reading about him you can't know God by books you will never and let me tell you another truth you can never know God from a preacher you will never know him you will only hear about him from a preacher. The only way you will know God is when you experience him by yourself. Praise God. And the Holy Ghost is there, available. That's why Jesus said he will come. Now, when he comes, he wants to take you into deep things with him. So, so get out of carnality. That's what we're saying here. Now, look at this. Verse 5, 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 5. It says, who then is Paul? And who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. Praise God. He said, these are just men. 
by whom you believe. In other words, through these men, the word of the Lord came to you and you heard the gospel. And you said, oh, I like the gospel. And then you believe. Now, when you believe, you don't stay there. You know, you know sometimes you're talking to someone, you're sharing some truth with the person. And they say, mm, well, my pastor have not told us this one yet. That is carnality. Your pastor doesn't know all. He can never know all. There is no man that can know all. You know why? Because we are all representing a joint. So every joint will supply. So no joint, no one person can be the all embodiment of God. Praise <laughs> God. No. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. So, so he says, these are people through whom you believed. Haven't believed through them. What did you believe? You believe that Jesus is the Christ, right? All right. So if you believe that Jesus is the Christ through these people who preach the gospel to you, the moment you believe, what are you supposed to do? Begin to walk with the Christ that you have believed. Now, does it mean discard all these men? No. You see, every man carries a testimony of God. And when we share our testimony, you know what we do? We, 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 we complement one another. For example, anything God wants to do, you know, I've talked to you about the, the principle of two and the principle of three before. Anything God wants to do, he doesn't do it with just one person. Everything God does, if, if it's a revelation, if it's a miracle, whatever God does, you will see this sequence in God. You will see that at least three people will bear that testimony. You know, when Jesus rose from the dead, I've told you that before, that I, I, if I was Jesus, you know, when I rose from there, I think the first place I would have gone to was Pilate's house and then the high priest and then all those people, that, all those soldiers that flogged me. I would just go, hey guys, I'm back. <laughs> but Jesus didn't do that. You know why? I told you, it's not, you see, even if they had seen Jesus, I tell you this, they still wouldn't have believed. That's the truth. So he didn't bother. He rather went to those who would believe. But look at what Jesus did. He didn't just appear to all the disciples at one time when they were together. He could have done that, but he didn't. You know what he did? He appeared to Mary Magdalene. You know, she was at the grave and thought he was a, he was a, a gardener. And then she realized, oh, Jesus, whoa. And then he appeared to those disciples on their way to Emmaus. You know, he kept appearing to them like that. Now, now the disciples began to receive testimonies that he was risen. See, so this one comes and says, hey, the Lord met me today. Are you sure? Yes, I saw him. No, I saw him. All right. Okay, so another person comes and says, hey, have you guys seen the Lord? No. What I say? I saw him. Okay, have you guys met? No, we've not met ourselves since, you know, these things happen. So he's saying he's seen the Lord. This one is saying he's seen the Lord. Out, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word is established. So by the time, now that's why Jesus reprimanded Thomas. See, because you've heard from all these witnesses and you were still saying, eh, eh. See, so when you hear or when you see things from at least three witnesses, Know that that thing is confirmed. Praise God. All right, so now it says, verse, verse 6, it says, I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then, neither is he that planted anything. <laughs> neither he that watered it, but God that giveth the increase. If God doesn't give the increase, your planting is nothing. That's the truth. That's why, you know, Jesus actually said this to us. Say, look, when you have done the will of God, this is how you should, this should be your attitude. He said, Lord, you know, I'm an unprofitable servant. You know, people don't like that statement. Say, how can you, how can, but who said it? Jesus said he should say it like that. Praise God. Now, now, say, you know, in the, in, the, in the faith movement and then, you know, positive confession, we don't want to say, I can, I can I say I'm an unprofitable? No way. I, I'm a servant with profit. Praise God. But Jesus said, now you see, it's an attitude. Now, what attitude is it? That's what Paul was dealing with here. He said, we are nothing. If I didn't bring the word of God to you, someone else would have brought the word to you. That's what he's saying. So the fact that I did it, doesn't mean I will now feel special. God, you know, it is me that preached to that guy, that he you know that bad guy. 
It was my message that he heard. Uh -uh, he didn't hear you. <laughs> when you were speaking, he heard the Lord. Praise God. It was the Lord. So the Lord reached out to him. You were the vessel. Yes. Do you worship the pipeline through which water comes to your house? You know, you just, man, see this pipe, eh? If this pipe was not there, ah, there was no way. What happens when the pipe breaks? You fix it. You replace it. Praise God. Why? Because water must come to your house. So if you just say, okay, you know what? I mean, you know, some people think that way, God. You know, if I, if, if I, if I vex now, just say I'm not preaching again. Okay. <laughs> Out of the mouth of babes and <laughs> sucklings, God has ordained praise. So you say, I'm not preaching again. You will just see a child doing the same work that you should have been doing. Oh, 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 praise God. So he says, we are nothing. And that's the truth. You don't put your faith in men. You know, Paul said in chapter 2, so that your faith will not stand in the wisdom of men, but in what? In the power of God. The same thing. Your faith shouldn't be in where you walk. Oh, I, 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 you know, I, I thank God if I lose this job, eh, eh, I'm finished. You don't talk like that. You know, during, during a, a prayer meeting on, on, on the first, you know, a brother shared a testimony how he has not been paid his salary for 14 good months. Praise God. 14 good months. Who does that? But guess what? He was doing everything. He, you know, he, he lost count of how, how, how many months they were owing him. He lost count of it. And then all of a sudden, they began to pay. And then they paid him the lump sum. And he had to go to the accountant and say, sorry, I, I, I can't trace. How, how long, how many months are you guys owing me? So it was from the accountant he realized that for 14 months, for 14 months, he didn't feel it. You know why? Because he has recognized that God is his son. Now, someone else, three months they've not paid me, I'm leaving this place. But you know why he didn't leave? Because the Lord says, you're not done with this place yet. Praise God. And the Lord was taking care of him. For 14 months, he was still going to work at his expense. He was doing all the things he, is need, he needed to do. He didn't get into strife. He didn't get into bitterness. No, he was enjoying the Lord, praise God. And the Lord began to bless him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, that's what he does. Never put your trust in men. It will fail. Don't, don't start thinking, okay, my salary is 200000 Okay, if I'm saving 100000 every month, by 10 months, I will have $1 million, And then I'll be able to do this thing. That is nonsense, praise God. Uh, you see, it, it, you, you can save, but, but don't begin to tell yourself, if I can do this, then I will achieve that. What do you want to do with that one million? You want to buy a car? Ask God for a car. Lord, I, I receive a car from you right now. And live your life. Trust God when you receive funds. I've told you, when you receive money, you take it to the Lord and say, Father, for even if it's your salary that is paid you, you take it to the Lord and say, Father, thank you. I just received some money today. And Lord, you know the first thing I want to do? I want to honor you with my tithes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And then you take your tithe out and say, Lord, you know what? I have, I have taken my tithe out and I'm waiting for instructions from you to tell me what to do with it. It's your money, so you tell me what to do with it and I'll do it. Praise God. And that's how you relate with the Lord. What are you doing? You're honoring him with your substance. Praise God. And what's going to happen? He takes care of the rest. A true believer, you'll find out, cannot be living by how much he's earning. He lives by faith. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right. So he says, Now he that watered, verse 8, Now he that watered, and, now he that planted, and he that watered are one. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, we're out of time. We're going to continue from here. You know, it's, I was thinking by now we'll be in chapter 5 or cha no, chapter 10. But see where we are, chapter 3. There's so much to gain from this. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.